let's get down to business. I um just finished watching The Gilded Age and I am disappointed. I am underwhelmed. I am yeah, just disappointed. Like that's basically mostly what I can say. If you want to watch it, go watch it. It's on HBO Max. I'm saying, I'm letting you know right now, if you're looking for something like Game of Thrones, it's not even anywhere near. It's not even like Bridgerton. It's, and I hate Bridgerton. If you want to know my opinions about Bridgerton just a little bit, I have linked in the description my Netflix picks and bricks. Picks are the things that I like. Bricks are the things that I don't. I will be doing um, a part three and part four, which will be my new picks and bricks. Because so many things have came on to Netflix since I've actually made those two videos. But this piece of garbage. So first off, it's going to pretend like racism wasn't as big of a deal as it was. And okay, this is before I get into everything else that's wrong with The Gilded Age. There were some good actresses. I liked Peggy. I was only invested in Peggy because the story was trash. Too many pieces moving all at once and me not caring about any one of them. I only cared about Peggy. There were barely any black people in this whole thing. I, we were gonna, like, they make, they posted this video of, like, oh, the elite black people and we don't, we barely see them. And when I talk about diversity in realism versus escapism, when you're doing something historical, I think it's really interesting that y'all like to get to the very last button of the clothes, by the way, were really nice. I think it's one click above Bridgerton, and it beats it in that sense. But I'm just going to let you know right now, I hate Bridgerton. I hate it so bad. Uh, maybe I'll do a video specifically on Bridgerton, but uh, as it stands right now, I've only had done a few videos about Bridgerton. I think I talk about it vaguely in one of my um, current event videos. Um, link is in the description to the current events. I don't do them often because it's so tiring to have to keep talking about stuff that's like, I applaud every single person on YouTube who can look at the blogs, look at everything that's going on, look at tweets, and do it live. It's it's hard enough to follow one thing, let alone every single thing that happens every day. But let me explain to you why I hated The Gilded Age. I'm just going to let you know right now. Bottom tier show, bottom tier. Like I said, talking about escapism and historical realism. If you want to have historical realism, you don't pull your punches. You show what happened. And that's what the show was trying to bank on. But they like to make it seem like, oh, look at all these white people who were fine with that, with black people. Oh, it's just the few outliers. That's what they're trying to make you believe in 2022. That's what people are trying to make you believe in 2022. Just imagine back when the Gilded Age was really happening. You know it was not. So, well, everyone was fine except these few here and there. They showed the experience of a black person for like one episode or two episodes, I believe. The rest of the time she was around nothing but white people and she was getting looks at a few people here, a few people there, but she was still fine to be there. And I'm not saying that I want to see her get killed. I am literally just saying don't make it seem like you're going to show an aspect for the majority of the show or at least half. It wasn't even a third of the show. I'm letting you know right now. The black excellence, the, the black elites were at most one sixth of the show. And like I said, when Peggy, the only black girl who's the focal point, like there's like 10 main characters that we're supposed to follow. I don't know how we're supposed to follow it. Okay, let me give you an example of how you're supposed to make a bunch of characters matter to me. Game of Thrones did it just fine. We get to know them, and I feel like we didn't get to know them long enough for me to care about a season finale. There's only nine episodes, as far as I'm concerned. I may do this video, wait a week, and see if it's going to come out, but it, they make it seem like that's the season finale. Everyone's together, everyone's talking. I just walked out the room. I'm, I'm so not interested in The Gilded Age. 
but I also didn't really like Game of Thrones as much as I did when I first started watching it. And it's not even because it got bad, but just looking at it as a whole. People said, oh, it, it stopped at, it got bad at season six or seven or whatever. It got bad at five and I think a little bit at four. When they stopped making bad things happen to the characters that we knew shouldn't, even if they weren't going to, if, even if they had to live through turmoil, they should have made turmoil happen. I think when the sept blew up, that was when the show blew up because there were no longer stakes that we cared about. But I digress. If you want to know my opinion about Game of Thrones, link is in the description to the retrospective two years later after the season finale where I talk about what they forgot and what they just didn't care about. But let me digress back to the Gilded Age. So like I said, um, they bank on us thinking that it's realism, historical realism, when it's actually um, this fake escapism kind of, but still racism. And like I said, you cannot choose both. You cannot choose both. If you're going to have escapism like Bridgerton, that they claim is, is supposed to be um, colorblind casting, race doesn't matter. You cannot talk within your work of art and say, we were divided by color. The moment I heard that crap come out of that woman's mouth, I checked out of Bridgerton. I checked out. And I'm not going to congratulate you for having a very light-skinned paper bag test approved main character who is barefoot and pregnant. I'm not. That's mediocrity. And it's just a slap in my face. But what I don't like is the fact that the Gilded Age is the same crap. Y'all don't know what escapism is. If you're going to make a thing like Game of Thrones, then you cannot divide people by color. You cannot bring it up as any factor at all. How hard is it to just do class issues? How hard is it to just do class issues when it comes to science fiction, stuff like Game of Thrones and whatnot? How hard is that? Seems pretty easy to me because I'm writing books. So from what I understand, the Gilded Age is supposed to be a period piece, not escapism. So what's this teetering on racism, not racism, everything nice and peachy? And there were some issues that happened, but that's like something that could happen now. Like I said, very, very disconnected, very disconnected. Um, Peggy's story is the only one that I can care about and that I did care about. Didn't even know her name, really, to be honest. I don't know anybody's names. They said, oh, it's it's Phil Gorgel and Phil Gildorf and Hugenschmagen. I know what people look like. I just don't know anyone's name except Peggy. I don't know her parents' name. And her story is still another thing that I hate about how you guys love to make diversity work. You love to talk about racism and then also hold it back. And I'm going to say this for the people who are going to complain about me talking about this. If you're not who I'm talking about, then you shouldn't be bothered. I'm saying historically, do what is historically accurate. If you're doing something to where we shouldn't talk about racism in that particular piece, don't write it like there's racism and don't talk about it in your script. Two very simple things. I don't understand why this is so hard. I think you're doing it deliberately. I think you're doing this deliberately so you can kind of make it seem like racism wasn't so bad. And oh, it was just separate, but equal. Yeah, um, do some research, read a book, um, do something, honestly, because what you're doing right now isn't working. So whatever you're doing right now, scrap that and Michael Jordan it into the trash can, honestly. So Peggy, her story is so sad. And it's annoying because, like, if we're going to see all the racism and whatnot, like, why does she have to go through so much misery? They talk about it and there's all these commentaries about, oh, this, that, and the other. But they were not hearing it back then. They were not hearing it. I don't care if that makes you feel some type of way. It's 
history. Y'all love to talk about history until you're on the wrong side of it. Talk about history because you can't ignore history or else it will repeat itself. And it seems like it's going to keep doing this over and over again until you guys accept it. Her story is super sad. I'm not going to spoil a lot, especially since I don't really understand how the story ended. I don't really understand this whole situation. There's this um, thing that happened in episode nine. If that is the season finale, I'm not sure. I'll add extra if it's not, but I, it, I think it said season finale or something or watch the season finale. I'm like, I don't know anything. I don't understand what's happening. People die. Some guys charged, but then he's he's exonerated and then he's threatening people like a Lannister and I'm just like okay okay I understand that um you're the wolf looking dude I don't know your name and then there's a woman in his bed and then I thought he was someone who had a relationship with the dude but that was somebody else and then they bring it back like literally the episode before episode nine which I think is the season finale right now but they just kind of like add things just to drop it off. Like they didn't even go into their relationship that much. We just see them in bed once and then we see him in episode eight or something being antagonistic towards him because he's like trying to ignore him or something. But I really don't understand what happened in the Gilded Age. Even in the Bridger in Bridgerton, I understand what happened in Bridgerton. I can explain it to you. With Gilded Age, it's so hard to understand what, you, like, what I just watched. It, it it all ended in a nice, neat bow, but the bow is invisible, so it doesn't matter how neat it is, because I have no idea what it looks like. There wasn't enough context. There wasn't enough episodes. If this is the season finale, I'll I'll go back. I'll let y'all know. But I'm re recording it as I literally walked out of the room because I was so done with this. Everyone's all together. And I'm just like, why should I care? And then this girl's trying to elope and then we don't know what's happening because we don't get to see this dude. So it's like we're literally in the dark with her when you can be in the dark with the characters. But when there's absolutely no way of knowing anything or even having an inference, it's kind of like you can do whatever you want. And that's not really cool writing. That's kind of just like, it's not even safe. It's kind of like, just making it more difficult for you to get your audience engaged with the crap that you're making. But all in all, I'm I'm just it's it's not a good show. I'm not even gonna. I don't know. I feel like not reading it. I would say two or one. Honestly, I feel stronger with a two because there was like literally giving you pennies, giving you pennies that you showed black people who had wealth like one black family one black family we get to see that has wealth one black family one let me let me say that one more time one there was like six um main character families that we're supposed to follow don't remember who's who or who's whose husband i literally thought somebody was cheating on somebody but that was their literal husband i learned by the end because i don't care and you didn't make me care the story's bland it's kind of like just stuff happening with nothing really of substance that i should care about and the stuff i did care about you hid and barely gave me anything just enough for me to sit there and wait for more of the the black elite only for me to see them in black only places that are not looking like and that that could be historically accurate for all I know. But you're not going to be historically accurate about what we see if you're not going to be historically accurate about the racism. See, we can't have it both ways. Pick your poison. And before I get any sly slick comments that are just going to be deleted, when I say that Peggy's situation was miserable, um, there can be some literal real aspects that are horrible but black people don't just deal with racism and that's all they deal with her situation with the baby is insane she did not have to have such an insane side story that wouldn't even make if it was real racism we saw even worth being in the same situation if you are going to watch it spoiler alert 
she has a son that her her dad said he, she couldn't marry this dude because he, he was like he's not wealthy or something and they got annulled but she had a baby and the reason why she's got to leave the house where she's getting money at is because someone keeps reading her letters and we're supposed to think that that's racism when racism wouldn't just be her opening her letters and disregarding her human life it would be a lot worse than opening her letters it would be like literally she should she was not safe in the house and they made it seem like it was something as meaningless as opening letters. And yes, that's a breach of privacy, but it's meaningless when people have literally died over this whole situation, over racism. And like I said, I don't want her to die, but this is just an unfathomable situation where there's so many white people in one space that were fine with her being in the house and oh i won't do anything about it but it's okay and i respect you and all that be playing very respectable when that's not how things work again like i said they're making it seem like the way we saw it, what we saw in the gilded age they are literally trying to play as if that is happening right now so just put that into perspective there was never a dip where we were dipping and we were close to something and then we went back to racism. We are s The significance and importance of having historical accuracy when it comes to the racism is it sets a precipice and no, no one should be looking to the Gilded Age or Rain or any like historical drama fiction for historical accuracy. But it sets the precipice to continuously do this. And for example, the Tudors may not have everything correct and they may even use some things that were proven to be fake to cause conflict but that does not shape the world to believe something about a group of people or how the group of people were perceived by another group of people i.e racism thinking that freaking anna cleaves was ugly to king henry the eighth isn't going to make people think all white women are ugly. Because white people and white women specifically have had more chances to broaden their horizon for roles and for places in the world to not be representation or a single facet to represent the whole. While black people, black women specifically, are held to that standard because Ethnic people in general do not have enough representation out there to say this isn't exactly what happens because we keep getting the same scripts, the same stories told the same way for the most part. Most of ethnic girls, usually dark skinned girls, coming of age stories, and black girls and ambiguously black girls that are on TV come through the coming of age story through trauma, trial, tribulation, and most often sexual trauma. Nothing good in their situation that makes any of it worth it. Peggy, I feel like falls under that category. Um, I don't watch Euphoria, but from what I gather from everyone else is saying, Rue seems to fall under that category. And a story must have conflict to function as a story. But just know, just know, just look, look, look for your eyes. Listen with your ears. How many of these coming of age stories that are told from a black girl's or ethnic girl's perspective that surrounds their trauma personally as a perceived woman to the outside world versus how every story we get with these white girls coming of age are written differently yes we have two different situations two different scenarios in real life but again let's not teeter over historical realism and fiction those are two separate things. And as I stated, I don't think the Gilded Age was making itself seem like it was escapism. And you can't put both. You can't. You just can't. I'm sorry. You cannot. Not with certain aspects that you're going to bank on. If you're going to bank on certain aspects, you can't leave certain aspects out. Um, precious. There is no coming of age story that I can think of that doesn't have trials and tribulations 
for black girls specifically ethnic girls in general Fa Mulan had to go fight for her family she had to take a role that she didn't necessarily want she wanted to bring honor to her family but she didn't want to fight on no front lines Tiana had to have trials and tribulations she had to work hard for her stuff she had to work hard for her crown it's like getting really tiring and like I said when there is realism and then there is historical accuracy you have to be the one to understand the nuance of not doing what everyone else has done and just hint at some things jolt a little here jolt a little there just enough so you can say that there was racism and it was true but not enough to actually mean anything not enough to actually say anything about this situation anything meaningful and speaking of which i just finished watching turning red so i will be doing a video about that keep tune for that video it's going to be out in one of these days but how many people how i'm going to defend it when i when i talk about turning red i'll talk about the stuff about it and whatnot but just a real quick thing here how many people were upset to see a coming-of-age story of a little Asian girl, but we get to see a coming-of-age story through the minds of boys, white boys, and black boys, Morales, dude, Spider-Man. There are a lot of people who have issues with Spider-Man being black and all that, and um, Loser Roddick and Doom Penis, all those people in that side of YouTube are trash, and... It's them who had an issue with coming of age story for a little Asian girl. But we don't get stories like Turning Red where it's not always about trauma. And even the, I'm going to talk about how there's trauma played into the whole um, turning into a panda thing situation and emotions. But it's just an example. You can have her struggle, but tell me who... In the story seemed to have gotten more care when it came to telling her story. The white main girl, the white main girl that was going to elope or whatever. And like I said, this isn't a well-written show. So even the fact that she had more care for her character than I believe Peggy did, it wasn't good. It wasn't enough to keep me engaged. I was more engaged in... Peggy's half cared about story. We'll see uh, like black people working in a thing like twice and then we're done and everybody else. Let's talk about them. But honestly, it's got to stop. But misrepresenting how severe racism is in a period piece that is, from my understanding, not supposed to be escapism does have implications that make people seem very nice and very kind to where putting it in perspective to now makes people seem very dramatic when they complain about racism that seemed to have happened years ago in the same way. So why would it be now? That's what I mean when I talk about realism versus escapism in the context of black people specifically we didn't see the effects of what happened when black people were pushing back on racism as if white people weren't actively trying to make sure that racism stood in place just giving her a look here and a look there like oh ooh, oh like i said like i said they're trying to say that that happens now so that's not how we would see it. If you mench my words up in your brain and it comes out like you expect me to see someone suffer greatly and then you think that I'm complaining that black women suffer or ethnic people suffer, you're dumb. You're dumb. Just be a good writer, honestly. If you can't stay within the margins, just be a good writer above all. And it'll work. It'll work out. Since you're not such a good writer, it doesn't work out for you and it never will because you're going to always find an instance where you can make the little black girl or the little ethnic girl suffer so greatly just because of her identity and not have any good qualities about her story. Nothing, no support people, no nothing. Everyone, it's got, it's like the worst case scenario for any ethnic person ever, except when it comes to 
actually showing the actual racism because that would mean you would have to actually sit here and realize that you're out of your depth and you shouldn't be writing this and you should get someone who actually understands this situation to write it but you refuse to pay them because racism you think you can do it better where's that getting you we're still we're still trying to get up that hill we're trying to get up that hill away from it that's what i'm saying if you want a good historical inaccurate depiction of historical events that's cool i recommend rain on netflix i do believe it's still there i'm not sure it's about mary queen of scots it's very historically inaccurate because she does not um marries francis for as long as she does in the show and all of her ladies in waiting were named mary and there weren't named different people and i know that would make it hard for people to understand but i feel like if i made a historical documentary thing like a historical drama about mary queen of scots her, her life was pretty interesting i recommend you do your research before watching the show so that you can point out historical inaccuracies that's what i like to do when i watch something like that and it doesn't really take this fun out of it because like i said rain was a really good okay let me let me put this on before i put you to rain rain is good in the beginning it starts to get really bad when she meets francis because he's a loser he's a loser and an idiot and then wonders why she likes his half brother or something bash and i don't want to spoil nothing for you but once the king starts to get involved with this whole plot it gets it gets really bad and you're just gonna have to brace yourself for like one season one whole season you're gonna have to just sit there in it it gets a lot better when um the queen is in the majority of the episode she literally carries the show literally she carries the show um then it gets bad the more people that mary loses around her the worse the show gets because they were like the good parts of the show and some things are literally gobbled the ending this is not a spoiler because this is history if you don't know it i don't know what to tell you but spoiler for the show mary queen of scots is beheaded by queen elizabeth the first and that is not queen elizabeth the second sister for those who don't know she was queen a while ago and she was the most successful queen and had to do with slavery and s stealing things and being pirates and both things can be true um queen elizabeth the first was one of the greatest rulers in all history she i said one of the greatest rulers we don't know about all the rulers because <sighs> colonialism but what I will say is they don't talk about black people at all. At all in this. And they don't talk about it in the other show, historical drama, inaccurate, very inaccurate, but very entertaining. The Tudors, my boy literally had, okay, if you want to see something raunchy, <laughs> The Tudors is what you need to watch. If you want to see something a little less, a little more about women, Rain is where that's at. Um, I'm probably not going to do a video on Rain anytime soon. I'll probably sooner do a Merlin if you want something that has no raunch at all and barely about women except the ones that are the evil ones. I do realize there are a lot of evil women in Merlin, but Merlin is a good show and if it was given the game of thrones treatment i'm 100 percent certain that a lot more people would have been engaged in the story but it is far too pg it's not even pg it's like g it's like e for everyone no blood until the final season no one is shirtless for more than a certain amount of time every time the characters kiss it's like they kiss for the first time and i feel like there should have been a lot more sexualities involved and they didn't do that the most progressive thing they did was have a paper bag test approved 
Guinevere, who starts as a maid in Camelot. So, so the difference between that, I can say for a fact that Merlin, I'm not going to talk about Merlin here, okay? But what I will say is if you want to be upset at me, I'll be like, hey, isn't that? No, it's not because they never talk about her being black. Never. Never. They never talk about her being black. It's just about where it was class. It was class. It's classes. But Merlin, the show, was written with a sexist eye. It's not that the world is sexist. It's that the people in the world are written as if written by someone who is sexist. Most of all the women are evil, can't be trusted, or they're too dumb. And then there's like one or two women that are the odd, like not like other girl girls that we're supposed to accept as the exception to the rule. Yeah. Gilded Age is trash. I recommend you never watching it or watching it as free as possible. If you want to watch a historical um, drama, inaccurate but enjoyable, the following ones in these orders I would watch. Merlin is on Netflix. It's not specifically on Netflix. It's not a Netflix original. It's just on Netflix. CGI is terrible. Gets better. Story is kind of whack. It's enjoyable. The dragons speak like they should for the most part. For the for the very one dragon speaks. Okay, there's other dragons that don't, and I'm kind of upset at that. But when I make my video, maybe if I get th like more subscribers, I will be more inclined to make that video i really want to but it's going to take a long time because i want to do everything i can to get everything i want out about merlin because i really do have an issue with merlin but it's it's a good show i recommend it to you first and foremost second show the ranch um i would say tutors or rain like i said if you want something that's really raunched out and crazy like this dude has a servant that um pleasures him before he goes to bed so i just think that's hilarious so um ain't, ain't nobody else doing that gilded age ain't do nothing like that but tutors is what you want if you want something that's a little less like that and more about women and about their stuff rain was really nice it was really nice breath of fresh air it didn't have to be great and it's not great at all under any circumstances but why does everything that is about black people or about any minority women have to be perfect spot on 100 percent great or else it's trash maybe you need to ask yourself that before you ask me any other questions about what i'm talking about if it relates to that ask yourself that question in the mirror and do not leave until you figure it out and you answer but i'm done yeah i just wanted to drop this down because i just saw gilded age and i had to talk about it because i'm just like that's unacceptable w what even happened i was watching it with my mom like what is this why are we watching this what's the goal um don't make it seem like we're gonna talk about the black elite and see the black elite if we're only gonna see the black elite like once or twice in two episodes don't make it seem like it's gonna be a big deal when you're gonna majority you're gonna um prioritize all the white people of the show when i don't even care about them <sighs> if you want to see something better all of this that i'm talking about is on netflix and last time i checked it was on netflix um merlin it's basically about merlin from the arthurian lore Guinevere is black. She becomes queen. I, if I could write that show differently, oh my goodness, I may have to do a video about what I would have done or put it with my review of Merlin. But oh my gosh, I could make such a good series with the foundation that they have of that show. The foundation was so well put together. Execution was terrible. And I do mean terrible. You can watch it and enjoy it. And I enjoy it. But I'm going to criticize it to the ground. And I don't think it's going to get a good rating. As it stands. But Tudors, I'm not going to... I'm definitely not going to do a review on Tudors. If I do anything on Tudors, I'm just going to do a quick bit. And I'm just going to say this is cool and whatnot. But 
I don't really care enough about the Tudors. I can't stand King Henry VIII. He's like one of the most disgusting pieces of garbage of history. And I think it's very poetic justice that the one woman that he ruined the life of and killed. Um, I, he killed two women, but Anne Boleyn, the one that they made black for some reason. I didn't, me, hi, hi, I'm a black person. I'm a black woman too, and I didn't ask for a black Anne Boleyn. So if you've got any problems with a black Anne Boleyn, please do not bring that to me. I did not make that. You need to go to talk to the people who made it. Thank you. Have a good day. But yeah. I'm not going to do no review on the Tudors and Rain will probably be last on my list because I have to rewatch it and I, I literally skipped through like a couple episodes when I first watched it because it, it gets bad. I'm telling you, it gets bad. And I think the best out of all of them, if you really just want something that's enjoyable, is Merlin. And it's very, G. It's, it's E for everyone. No sex, no blood, no gore barely any cursing at all at all i don't even think i can recall one curse word it's just like age of hockey stick stuff like that that's not any and it's also like an english um bbc america thing so they're gonna be talking like oh and i forgot to tell you guys anybody who's here from my resident evil videos knows that i've been referencing Dickon from Game of Thrones and Percival from Merlin a lot when I talked about Welcome to Raccoon City and my not hashtag not my Wesker was played by Tom Hopper who played both of those people yeah so that's basically it I just felt so like I needed to I needed to make this video because you were not going to just drop gilded age and be like oh the black elite everything's great there's no racism but some people were kind of racist kind of sometimes i'm telling you right now you're gonna have to decide whether or not you're going to do escapism or historical realism you cannot play in both ball fields they're on two separate sides of the earth two separate sides of the poles one's north one's south period pieces like this act like there were nobody else but white british people walking around they act like there was not a soul else and then when there are other people then we get this whole we were divided by color bridgerton bullcrap there were black people everywhere there were asian people everywhere they weren't just in one place and white people get to be everywhere they want to be when the mood best suits them Everybody was everywhere. Different shades were everywhere. And they still are. That's a misrepresentation. And that's on what? Period piece. I am so done.